Hey everyone, Adam here at Digital Goja. Today is part two of how to use the Sigma USB dock to get the most out of your Sigma Global Vision Series lens. Stay tuned. Now, if you purchase a Sigma lens from Digital Goja, you may have noticed that it came with a Sigma USB dock along with your lens bundle. Now, the Sigma USB dock works in combination with the Sigma Optimization Pro software, allowing you to connect your Sigma Global Vision Series lens to your personal computer to update its firmware, fine tune the AF, and adjust some of the customizations of the lens. So if you haven't seen our first video on how to update the lens firmware using the Sigma USB dock, I highly recommend checking that one out first before moving on to any more advanced customizations. I'll make sure to have the links for that video in the description box below. You might be wondering why you need to calibrate your brand new Sigma lens to your camera. Now Sigma has extremely high tolerances in the manufacturing process. In fact, each lens is tested and calibrated using high precision machinery and computers, but they are not tested to the camera that the lens will be mounted to, specifically your camera. So this is why the Sigma USB dock is such an important and useful tool. This will make sure that the autofocus is working at its best to your specific camera body. In this video, we're going to show you how to calibrate the autofocus of your Sigma Global Vision lens to your camera body, specifically the 18 to 35 millimeter f1.8 art to the Canon EOS 80D. Keep in mind that all these steps are very similar for the Nikon mount Sigma lenses as well. And let me emphasize that it's really important to do this process using wide aperture lenses like f1.4 or 1.8, where the depth of field is very shallow and the point of focus is extremely critical. All right, so let's head over to the studio so I can show you how easy it is to calibrate the autofocus of your lens. So in order to start the process, you're gonna first need your Sigma USB dock your Sigma Global Vision Series lens. And if you haven't done so already, you're gonna to need to download the Sigma Optimization Pro software. It's available for both PC and Mac. I also have a USB card reader. Uh, this will allow me to transfer the images over to my computer so I can make a better evaluation of the image. Second, of course, you're gonna need your camera, uh, but you're also gonna need a sturdy tripod. This is gonna make sure it's gonna take any camera shake out of the equation when taking the photographs. Third, you're gonna need your focusing chart. This is available for purchase online and we'll drop the links in the description box below. Uh, this is what's gonna help you evaluate whether or not your lens is front or back focusing. And you need to make sure that it's placed on a level surface. And the last thing, you're gonna need patience. This process does take some time to do, uh, but the results are well worth it. Choose a working space with strong, even lighting and place the lens calibration tool on a steady level surface. Attach your camera to the tripod and set it so that the height of the camera is the same as the focusing chart. Also make sure that the camera is level. Sigma offers 16 categories of customization for zoom lenses, four options for focal length, and four options for shooting distance. What I like to do is keep my computer close to my setup so that I can see each category as I'm setting the camera and lens. For the 18 to 35 f1.8 art, I'll be taking my test photos at 0.28 meters, at 0.35 meters, at 0.5 meters, and at infinity. Now use your ruler or measuring tape and set your focusing distance as accurate as you can from the sensor plane of the camera. Shoot each focal distance separately at the focusing distances recommended by the software. Notice that your lens has a focusing window and it will indicate these distances for you. If you are using a zoom lens, like we are using here, the Sigma 18 to 35 millimeter f1.8, you will have to take the photo at different focal lengths and adjust each one accordingly. So I recommend following the software and shooting at 18 millimeters, 24 millimeters, 30 millimeters, and at 35 millimeters. Before you start taking photos, there are a few things to keep in mind. You want to make sure you're shooting and focusing through the viewfinder and not through live view, uh, since live view uses a different focusing system. Look through your optical viewfinder and use only the center focusing point. Use the lowest ISO you can for the lighting conditions you're shooting in. This way you will get the clearest image possible to evaluate. Also choose the widest opening 
that your lens has to offer. If you're using a lens that has an aperture of f1.8, make sure to set it to f1.8. Now this will vary depending on the lens you are using. Once you take the photo, I recommend that you view it on a computer screen instead of on the camera's LCD monitor to determine where the lens is focusing. Just zoom in on the ruler to check if the lens is front or back focusing. It should be exactly on zero. If you notice that the focus is not correctly on the zero or as close as possible, that means you'll have to do some adjustments using the Sigma Optimization Pro software. You'll have to disconnect the lens from the camera and connect it to the USB dock. This calibration process corrects for lens issues like front or back focus, meaning that the camera and the lens is focusing either in front or in back of the focus plane. And for our purposes today, the focus plane will be the zero on our test chart. As I mentioned earlier, the Sigma Optimization Pro software allows you to make changes at four different focusing distances at four different focal lengths, allowing you to make adjustments to minus 20 to plus 20 on each adjustment. So once you looked at your test photo, if you're noticing that it's focusing in front of the zero, you're going to make your adjustment to the positive end of the scale. And if it's focusing behind the zero, you're going to make your adjustment to the negative side of the scale. Uh, what I would recommend is starting out at plus or minus 10 and working your way to the focus point. Okay, so go ahead and make your adjustments. You're going to want to make sure to hit the rewriting button so it saves the information from the Optimization Pro software to your lens. Now you're ready to remove the lens from the dock and reattach it to your camera where you can go ahead uh, and reshoot the focusing chart. Um, and if you need to repeat these steps, you can go ahead and do that until uh, the focus is at the zero. Once you get it to where you like it, uh, make sure to take several images so you can get a consistent result with the settings that you've made. As you can see, it does take some time and effort to perform the autofocus calibration using the Sigma USB dock, but in my opinion, it is well worth all the time needed. This gives you the confidence that you can rely on the autofocus system to get the shot that you want. So I hope this video helped you out and guided you through the process of calibrating your Sigma Global Vision lens with the Sigma USB dock. Uh, remember, if you've changed anything that you're not sure of, you can always reset the lens back to factory defaults using the Sigma Optimization Pro software. So if you have any questions or feedback, make sure to leave them in the comments section below. If this video helped you out, hit us up with a like button and subscribe to our channel for the latest on new gear, unboxings, first looks, and much, much more. If you're in the Miami area, stop by, say hello at the Digital Go Just Showroom. Adam here, keep on shooting. I'll catch you in the next video, folks.